Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. A little bit of a different video today because we're not talking about something that you can actually drive, although this is remote controlled and you can drive it around. This is a mobile battery pack. And um, I kind of want to talk about the use cases of this thing, why I'm actually super pumped up about it because you all know I'm a car enthusiast that got addicted to electric cars, which has gotten me addicted to electric toys and gadgets. And we're not turning this into a toy and gadget channel. This is always gonna stay a car channel. Um, however, I think this can actually really help us with some of our testing procedures. So I wanted to get your opinion on this type of unit, walk you through this particular one. Um, you know, Zender sent this Super Base V to us. I wanna walk you through the specs and everything. Um, also wanna thank them for letting us play around with it for a little bit. And I thought it was worth making a video just talking about my initial impressions on the unit. And then I think in future videos, we're actually gonna get it out in the field and use it for some pretty cool stuff. So um, this is more of like, what do you guys think? Should we play around with these mobile battery pack solutions, get them out and run cars completely out? Um, I think it's a cool idea. And uh, yeah, so let me go through the specs on this, tell you about this unit and tell you how I wanna use it. And then I'll show you kind of how it works. We'll charge up the Twizy from it and do some other little things. <laughs> So a little update on the Twizy. Things are going pretty well for the Twizy, although um, it threw a service light recently. I don't know what's up with that, but I bought a whole new rear motor controller from a Twizy 80, and it might even be upgraded from that. It's from a little Renault Twizy tuning company in Norway. And I said, give me all the crazy stuff you got. So this is going full race Twizy. We got the race chip in there. We got the rear motor controller going in. Um, may even upgrade the battery pack. What's really funny about this though, the reason I've parked these two next to each other is the Twizy has roughly six and a bit kilowatt hour battery pack. This is roughly a six and a bit kilowatt hour battery pack. Essentially, if I plug this into the Twizy, it doubles the range. <laughs> so I might just need to stuff this thing in the back seat and keep it hooked up. That could be a fun experiment to use this as a range extender. I don't think it's actually a practical use case to haul around 130 kilowatt hour, excuse me, 130 pound, six and a half kilowatt hour battery pack in your, an electric car, an electric motorcycle or something like that. But there are some really unique use cases that this will allow us to do to, I think, actually make better content for you guys, which is why I was really excited to get this in. There's also some really neat things about the Zender Super Bass V4800 is this particular one, excuse me, Super Bass V6400. Um, this can actually charge from a J1772 charger or just like a regular wall outlet. So I think I wanna start by showing you how I charge this thing up, show you how you can pull all the energy out of it. It comes with a really cool app, I gotta show you that. And then I wanna charge the Twizy at the end. It would be cool to hear what you guys think we should do with this. Uh, one of my plans is we're gonna go to a private testing facility where I can actually do some real range testing with the Twizy. This isn't street legal. I can't really drive around the business park. It's just a little bit hard to make. I tried to do a range test around the business park, but it was taking so long. So I was like, we gotta go to a track. Um, so I thought it'd be cool to bring this out to a track, have it die in the middle wherever it dies, and then you know, remote control this thing out to it and charge it up. I thought that'd make a great video, it'd be kind of neat, and it'll really show us how much buffer there is below zero on the old Renault Twizy. So that's one of the ideas. Let me get it started to charge. So what I'm gonna do is just show you, it's very easy to maneuver and push. You know, it has, everything's on wheels. You can of course lock them if you want to, but it's just easy to push around for something that is quite hefty. Um, now I can pick this up and put it in a vehicle. Alyssa can pick this up and put it in a vehicle. It's not that you, you're not picking this thing up with one hand and throwing it in the front trunk of a Rivian. This is a, a beefy device right here. So just, you know, to set the expectations, six kilowatt hours worth of storage um, is heavy. So let's talk about what we have going on back here. In the back, this little port right here is what they're calling the Zen charge port. And in the Zen charge port is a European type two connection. And what's kind of cool is in the US, we use, of course, type one, J1772, and they provide a T1 adapter, EV T1 adapter. I don't know why it's called that, but let me show you kind of how it works. What I do is I plug the T1 adapter into the port there. I take our Autel charger here at the shop, plug it in there, and it charges. 
Now, what's cool is you can actually set a charging limit on this, unlike the Nissan Aria, which I thought was really interesting. So you can set your charge limit. They recommend for long-term storage, like everything for NCM chemistry, between 40 and 60% for long-term storage. They don't want you to leave it dead or full. You can see it's actually at 100% right now. So we should drain some of it out by plugging it into the Twizy while we talk. So let's get that going so we don't leave this at 100% for too long. We were charging it up for some videos. The weather turned against us. So we decided we got to push those off. But I still wanted to tell you all a little bit about this. Now, check this out. I can just wheel it around to the Twizy like this in short range. I'll show you the remote control later on. But <laughs> Here's my favorite use case. We bring it around to a vehicle. In this case, I'm gonna use the 30 amp connection on the front, 3.6 kilowatt output on this particular unit. And what's really cool, I never really am one to pull out the user manuals here though. Sorry, 3.8 kilowatt output. Look at this, semi-solid state battery, 3000 plus cycles, gives you the optimal temperature ranges. These people are super nerd level 9,000. Tells you how to care about the battery pack. When I saw this, I was like, oh dang, these guys get it. Really cool data. You can set it up as a generator for the US version, 7.2 kilowatt output in this configuration, which is really cool. You can stack a whole bunch of spare batteries to connect with a home panel. Check that out. Um, it's just so cool. So there's a million configurations you can do. I'm just showing you the one I'm excited about, but again, a million ways you can do this. So let's, let me get all of the adapters needed to charge the Twizy. Now the Twizy is a weird one because it uses a Shuko plug to charge. So I have the weirdest combination of adapters here to make this work, but the Twizy doesn't charge very fast. So it's actually all safe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug the 30 amp connection into the Zender. So here's our AC output. 30 amp. This actual port is really meant for like an RV park or an RV plug. And one of the things we are going to use this for is, especially as summertime is coming, it's very difficult to, um, it's been very difficult recently in, in summer months to actually run our air conditioning overnight with our sprinter. It just runs out of battery. We get three hours of AC. With the Zender connected, and even with the extended batteries, we could camp out of our Revel, our, our Winnebago Revel, for a full night, AC blasting, cooking meals, doing whatever, and still have battery left to spare. Not only do we have a solar panel that we can tie into that's on the top of our sprinter, because it doesn't need to be a Zender solar panel, they sent us like a massive solar array as well that we can play around with. So that I'm really excited about. I haven't gotten into solar yet, I really want to. I think it'll be pretty cool. So let's take the Shuko plug out of the Twizy. Let's plug it in. Boom. Let's turn this on. Let's click AC. And you got to give it some time to boot up. Just heard the contactors click. Here we go. 60 hertz, 50 hertz, 60 hertz US. And fans are running and the Twizy's charging. If you take a look in here, you'll see we're at 66%. We'll charge it up to, I don't know, 70%, something like that. There's my service light I was telling you about. But uh, I think I'll ask Colton to drive this down to 50% tomorrow. I don't like to leave it above 70% for long. But there you go. This is the use case I'm excited about using this for. Wheeling it out when we drain a car to zero, charging it up just enough to get to the charging station. Now, in this case, we're actually charging it on a 120 volt 30 amp connection. However, we can go up to a 240 volt 16 amp connection here. And that's about 3.8 kilowatts. I plugged in a Tesla the other day actually and it ran flat out at four kilowatts. So the fans were running on this thing, but that was really cool. I used a Tesla connector with a special plug to plug into their 240 volt adapter. And so I thought, okay, well four kilowatts isn't bad to carry around in your trunk. That's pretty sweet. I think that might be the most powerful unit that I know of that someone can just pick up. Um, this comes with a really cool app as well. So I want to show you some of the app functionality that it has and just some of the data tracking that it has. 
So if I could find the device, here it is. Then let me log into it. Do, 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 do. Here we are. The Zen uh, Superbase V6400. You can see it'll run for five hours and 23 minutes, outputting 1.2 kilowatts right now. That's all the Twizy's asking for because it has a really low amperage onboard charger. I guess we can put the lights on. Oh, we can change all the lights on this thing? No way. I didn't even know that. Light on. Let's take a look. It's green right now, which is default mode. But I can put it in. It's, it's right up here on the front if you take a look over here. I can put it in, uh, I don't know, SOS. Okay. Camping mode. That's nice. What's party mode? Oh, yeah. Party mode. So anyway, I mean, I just, they just like came up with some really cool stuff here. If you take a look also in the app, it'll show you the energy flow. So if you have it hooked up to your solar plus your grid, plus, uh, you know, the battery pack, here's what's going into your end unit device. And what's cool about this unit is you can really hook up anything and everything and it will sort out all the input power. So we could literally have it connected through the car charger, through our solar, and it will prioritize as much solar as it can get. It'll supplement the rest from the rest of the power sources and then act as an energy buffer. So like when we're out camping or whatever with our sprinter, we'll have the solar going, we'll have, you know, who knows, we might need a little generator to run a gas generator to charge everything. Whatever it is, you plug it into this thing and you're good to go. So this unit is six kilowatt hours. And I think that's probably a 6.43 something kilowatt hours. I mean, it's pretty beefy. And that again, that's a lot of energy. I mean, that's, that's a, as much battery as the Twizy has. And I think that's probably the most you could put into a unit that like someone could pick up because of course, energy density and weight is still quite high on this unit. It's over a hundred pounds. I can pick it, Alyssa can pick it, but it's, it's still pretty hard. What Zender thought of was, well, you might want to string together a few more. And so you can either hook together two super base Vs for certain applications or extra battery banks. So when we're camping and if we want to stay out there for a week in the middle of nowhere, we're definitely bringing some extra batteries along to string together. And you just literally hook one battery into the unit and on and on, and that works pretty well. So consider this an introduction to the unit. I like that you can use it for literally a million different applications. It's whatever you need energy for. You have USB-C output up to 100 watt. Love the power delivery stuff to charge your devices. I love that you have regular wall outlets under here as well. So you have four NEMA 520s. And the idea of mobile energy storage and mobile power wherever you are is probably the coolest thing. Um, to me at least. I, I just love the ability to bring energy with me. Now, I wish this was 150 kilowatt hours. Technology doesn't exist there today. It may not ever. But starting for something like this, if we're out on adventures, if we're out on film shoots, this can be an invaluable tool, I think. What do you guys think we should do with it? What do you think uh, you, know, you want us to try out with it? But ultimately, it can charge cars, it can charge all of our devices, and it can, can charge our sprinter to run air conditioning and our cooking stuff when our onboard batteries die. To me, it's a very reasonable uh, thing to have in the arsenal, if you will. I can't thank Zender enough for letting us play around with it for a little bit. Uh, I hope to make some more videos tying this into some other things, but I was hoping you guys also had some cool ideas with things we can do for it. So just a quick little filler video for you guys. Can't thank you enough for watching and uh, we'll be back to more car experiments soon. See you on another one soon. The link to this will be in the description below. Bye-bye.